all I can say is wow. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. There's somebody here in his name is Jesus. We acknowledge you tonight, Lord. We acknowledge your mercy, your kindness. Lord, I thank you. You whisper into the hearts of troubled people. And Father, you make a way they thought there'd never be a way in their life. And Father, the thoughts of destruction leave them because the Prince of Peace invades them. Tonight, we want to say to you, Jesus, we're indebted. We love what you love. Lord, we love your house. It's your house. It's dedicated to you. Father, we feel like we've been locked out. <laughs> we, we feel like, there, is this ever going to come to an end? All kinds of emotions and thoughts. Many of you had enough problems before COVID. And then it became insurmountable. But you're going to make it. Because the Lord is with you. And he hasn't forgot your name. He knows where you live. Tonight, it's not a religion, it's not a philosophy, it's a relationship with the living God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And this house is a house of praise and worship. I heard the clamoring about the football team and the hockey team and the soccer team. People just want to go into the stands and scream and yell and drink too much. That's a reality. Oh, but we have a reason to shout. Because God, you've been so good to us. Well, I've got a pretty large announcement. How many like good announcements? I said, how many like good announcements? Hallelujah, I got a pretty good announcement. This Sunday, May 30th at 9 and 11 o'clock, I'll just say it like I can say it. We'll have church. We're going to have it online, and then we're going to get in line and come here. Now, I want to say to you, you know, what did Pastor just say? We're going to physically meet here. Now, there's a limited number, limited number. you got to sign up now. If one of your friends call you and they say to you, are they opening on Sunday? You tell them no. Come on, everybody, because it's a limited amount. God forgives those kind of things. I don't know. I don't think so. Hallelujah. This Sunday at 9 and 11, we have a limited amount of people, but you need to sign up right now. And then I want to tell you this. We have a separate place. It's completely COVID ready for the kids. For the kids. 5 to 12, come on back to church. This is your house. So we have a brand new children's church for you with everything you can imagine, worship, video games, everything you can imagine. Now, I want to tell something to my trustees. You stay out of the children's church. I don't want to see you in those little chairs sitting there playing those games. And turn around and look at those kids say to, say to them, not right now, I'm playing, I'm winning. Hallelujah. It's for the kids. Well, we have been a tremendous church, a phenomenal church during this time that I have boasted in you, true Christians, Lovers of God and lovers of his house. I love what David said. He was estranged from the house of God for various reasons. One was Saul's spear being thrown at him. But he said this in Psalms 27, verse 4. The one thing, God, the one thing I desire, the thing I seek most of all is the privilege to meditate in your temple all the days of my life. Come on home. Come on home. Sign up. Come on home. We'll have a 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock. We've got it ready. It will be sanctified and clean. Go ahead and wear your mask. Come on, everybody. A lot of you look good in them. Just wear your mask and put that mask on and we'll just wear a mask. But we're going to offer God something that we haven't done in a long time, the sacrifice of praise. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen on Sunday. The spirit of hopelessness, the spirit of despair, the losses you feel that you'll never recover. Jerome, to begin to sing in the spirit. Hallelujah. 
Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, we just lift your name up. Hallelujah. Just come and offer to God your praise. Hallelujah. Those of you that he's healed, give him praise. Those of you that have been delivered, give him praise. Uh, those of you, the confusion of your mind went away, give him praise. Come on, everybody. Lift your hands, even at home. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We choose. You come to this house and you give God the sacrifice of praise. Drone, just hear me. Just hear it. Lord, I lift your name on high. Right now we lift the name that's above every name. Come on, we lift it on high. We lift you up. We lift your grace up, your power up. We, we lift your love up and your presence up. Hallelujah. Yes, we lift Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Come on, sing it to him. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to. Come on.
my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you.
stay in this just for one moment. I have a strong unction, a sense and a feeling that you have an impossible prayer. And God is going to answer that prayer. You have something that can't happen in the natural. I'm going to say this. God is going to answer that prayer. He's going to answer something that you think that you're not worthy of, that you can't figure it out. God is going to answer that prayer. And he won't be the God of the preacher or the God of the church. He'll be your God. From this night forward, you'll know that he answers prayer. Not the prayers of others, but your prayer. In the name of Jesus, right now, that which you've asked God to do, God's going to show himself on your behalf. And you're going to say, he's not the God of the church, the God of the preacher, but Jesus, you're my God. Thank you. A miracle tonight in the name of Jesus. Psalms chapter 20 and verse 7, it says, Some trust. Some trust in horses and chariots. And some trust in this and trust in your government job and trust in your inheritance and trust in your abilities. But we trust in the name of Jehovah Jireh. That's who we trust. Now, I've got a lot of good things in my life, a lot of great people in my life, but they're fragile. They don't always come through, but God always comes through. Once again, we have the wonderful privilege of trusting God. We trust God with our tithes and our offerings. You can e-transfer. You can send it in the mail to 3456 Fraser Street, beautiful Vancouver, or you can just come by the church and there's a mailbox. Glad Tidy's mailbox on Fraser and just drop it in. But tonight, Lord, we trust in you. How many of you can say with me during this crazy time, God has been incredibly faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I was a little kid and I didn't pay attention and I had to go to kindergarten twice. This is your leader. Twice down kindergarten. The second time I flunked it again. My dad being six foot four and a half, he said, they won't find your body. He said to me clearly, he said, son, you will pay attention because you will not go to kindergarten for the third time. How many right now are with me tonight? How many are not going to kindergarten the third time? Just think about it. You're too big for the desk. You can't go forever. Hallelujah. So tonight will be a promotion night for you. I've asked my lovely wife of 41 years, the mother of our five children, 10 grandbabies. She is a woman of God, a woman of character, and one of the greatest gifts at Glad Tidings. You'll find that to be true. I've asked her to bring the word of the Lord tonight. So Pastor Jody Ann Schott, would you come and bring the word of the Lord tonight? Well, thank you, worship team. That was an amazing time in the Lord. Well, I'm going to talk tonight about authority. I think authority is something that we um, kind of fight against. And I just want to say, come on over to the side of authority. Uh, there is an authority. It is a God-established authority. And it is a power that us Christians need to recognize. We were going to start this um, study here. I'm going to try and teach tonight and not preach. Um, it's going to start John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now let's also go to Isaiah 48 as I establish this concept of authority and how you can walk in authority. The grass withers. The flowers fade, but the word of God stands forever. Lord Jesus, I pray right now that you would touch the hearts of all your dear people and you would speak confidence into their spirit and that you would quicken them and that they would hear where they need to improve in an authority and how they can walk in a greater authority. Teach them, Lord. Use me in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So Romans 13, 1 says, let every person be subject to the governing authorities. Boy, isn't this a weird <laughs> um, topic, right? When we're kind of like at the end of COVID and we don't want to hear another authority tell us another thing. But it's bigger than that. It's bigger, much bigger. Continuing on, for there is no authority except from God. Interesting, huh? And those that exist, all the authorities that exist, have been instituted by God. In other words, God put that policeman right in front of you that day. <laughs> Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your soul. Do you know that? That your leaders are literally watching over your soul? And it would not be profitable for you because it says, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. As those who give an account, and it would be not profitable for you if this was a negative thing. Now, I can't tell you how many times that God has woken up, pastor or myself, or we're just be talking about something, and a person in a situation will drop into my spirit, and I will start praying for them, or I will say, Ugh, okay, Lord Jesus, just give me grace. Let me tell you, you don't want that. My children, Pastor mentioned that, you know, we have five children and ten grandchildren. And there have been times, I'll admit it, um, in the past, years ago when the kids were home, if I was out somewhere and I saw, oh, you know, so-and-so would just love that. No, I'm not buying it for them. I'm mad at them. They, haven't, they don't deserve it. They've been acting up. They've been giving me grief. And I won't buy it for the child. Now, they don't know this, but that's kind of a picture of why it's so important that you not only obey your leaders, but submit to them. There's been many times when I was sitting in the car, we were just talking about this today, we were sitting in the car, God put a man on his heart for the benefit of another pastor, this was like 15 months ago, we were coming um, home from a road trip. He just called him up, and I'm sitting there watching Pastor talk on the phone through the car, ministering to this man. Now, 15 months later, he's walking through a Holy Ghost, shockable miracle that could have never happened just because God put one pastor on his heart, and then he put another pastor on his heart, put it together, and now they are both experiencing not only an amazing story, but a bona fide miracle. And so that, ladies and gentlemen, is just a little kind of insight of why it's so important that you get in line with your leaders, that you, you submit to them and, and, you, and you believe in them and you pray for them because there is an energy that flows and it's called the authority of God. So Matthew 8, 9 tells a story and... and um, this is a centurion, centurion soldier, and he, um, he comes to Jesus, and he says, look, my servant is suffering, I'm, and he's panicking. Now, this is, you know, this guy is a big, tough dude. He's seen everything, and, you know, he's the kind of guy that eats his sandwich and wipes blood and then, you know, grabs his sword. I mean, he's a tough guy, but he's so moved that he goes to Jesus, and he says to Jesus, Lord, my, my servant is, is suffering. And, and Jesus says to him, he says, you know, well, do you want me to come? And he goes, no, 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 no. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I tell this one, go, and he goes. And that one, come, and he comes. And I say to my servant, do, do this, and he does it. Just say the word. And Jesus was so blown away over the faith of this man that he, he, he was just, I've never seen. And he said, your servant is healed. Now, this is a story that I, I, I said quickly. You can look it up in Matthew 8 and read from um, 9 on. And, and, um, but the point is that this man recognized that there is an authority 
And when you get in that authority, you walk into a completely different atmosphere. You walk into an atmosphere of God's miracles, of God opening doors. Getting back to the story in the car, you know, one of those pastors could have said, who are you? And why are you calling me? Oh, I am not interested. Or, you know, oh, thanks, that's very nice. But both of those pastors recognized the um, apostle in pastor, the authority that he walks in. And both of them, not knowing what was going on, immediately said, this is a God moment. Wouldn't it be great if we could walk through life understanding authority and just saying, whoa, wait a minute, this is a God moment. You see, neither, none of us, not pastor, not myself listening in on the conversation coming through the car, um, that neither one of those pastors knew what was going on, but they both said, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk in this. I'm going to receive this. And so we as Christians need to understand that there is an authority and we need to recognize it. And that's your first point. Number two, your authority comes from the author. You know, the root word for authority is author. Authority, authority. So that author is Jesus Christ. That's God. When I read to you in the beginning was the word. The word of God will give you more authority just by understanding and reading the word of God. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus said to them, he's speaking to the disciples, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Understanding that there is a, there is a chain of command. That God established the authority. Every authority, God established it. Let it happen. He gave all authority to Jesus. And then Jesus, when we become Christians, when God resides in our heart, then there is a new authority that we can walk in. That's why it's so important that we understand the word of God. Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You know, if you don't read the manual, you won't have confidence. Now, I'm sure all of you have heard that, that um, we um, only brought my car to Canada, my, my little tiny Honda, um, because we flipped Pastor's nice, elegant car. <laughs> Um, so we're sitting in my car, and he, it's new to him because it's, you know, he's driving our car, my car. And so uh, we're driving along, and, and on the dashboard, this little, you know, icon comes up, and he's looking at it, and we pull over, and, and he says, oh, what, what is that? that? That just came up. What does that mean? And I said, oh, that's the um, something, something. And uh, he goes, how do you know? And I said, because I read the manual. In the same way, you know circumstances and how, when a something comes up, you know how to take authority over that situation because we've read the manual. That's the word of God. So Jesus taught authority to his disciples, and I really believe that um, when we become Christians, when we let Christ into our life, it's very, very important that we allow God to take us through that process of sanctification, that process of us growing in God and learning to hear God's voice, learning to um, obey and learning to stand up and say, no, that's wrong. That's not my life. I, this is my life. And the only way we can do that is to read the Word of God so that we recognize what we're supposed to do when something pops up. Even Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, I have given you the authority. He's given us the authority. We need to take it. You know, I can be in a, in a store somewhere, any store. It's happened so many times. Somebody will come up to me and they'll say, excuse me, ma'am, do you happen to know where the blah, blah, blah is? And I'll turn and smile and I'm saying, I'm sorry, I don't work here. Happens all the time. Why? Because I walk in the authority. And when somebody needs help, they turn to whoever they find that looks like they have authority. Hmm, isn't that a great thing? Isn't there a world here that is looking for answers and they're looking for somebody that will walk in authority, have an attitude of authority? 
And so even um, in Luke 10, 19, Jesus is teaching the disciples, and he says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Now, when people read this, they focus on the snakes and scorpions because they're gross. But the real emphasis is overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. So years ago, um, I was uh, involved in a remodel, and um, I was talking to the uh, sheetrock people, and there was, you know, whenever you do a remodel, it's not as easy as, a, as, as uh, you know, doing a new build. And um, so uh, this guy you wouldn't want to meet on a dark road somewhere. He just kind of was scary, you know, and here's little me, and here's him, him and we're, we're going through the plans, and we're driving it, and I have a uh, drawing, you know, what we're going to do, and figuring this out, and the room smells like, you know, powdery sheet rock, and I had a bottled water, and I set my bottled water on the ledge, and uh, we were looking at the plans and talking, and I reached up and grabbed my bottled water, took a big, huge sip, and realized it was his bottle of water. I just, you know, I'm a germaphobic. <laughs> you know those little white, wet wipey things that everybody now carries? I've been carrying them since the birth of my first child. Everything got wiped down uh, in the restaurants and just toys and everything. was. So I, I'm, I'm just sitting there quaking inside and going like, okay, I can't scream and run out when that's what I really wanted to do. I couldn't, you know, what, go gargle bleach or something. I just was freaking out inside. But immediately that scripture came to my mind that nothing snakes and I tell you what you know why I knew it wasn't my bottle of water because I could taste his backwash is that just not the grossest thing in the whole wide world but as soon as I quit panicking a millisecond of that I said you know what I have all authority I can trample on snakes scorpions I can overcome all the power of the enemy nothing will harm me not even backwash and I put his bottle down grabbed mine and the reason why I can't tell you what we were talking about because that's what I remember about the circumstance not whatever decision we made on the blueprints <laughs> whatever it turned out fine <laughs> so let me explain just a little. Turn with me to Matthew 10. We're going to start in uh, verse 1. This is a little picture here that I, that I want to emphasize. Is Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority. Now, this is before Christ died on the cross. It's before the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's when he's teaching his disciples that short three-year span where these, you know, uneducated men Jesus picked out and they lived and walked and saw him and learned from him. So he pulls them aside one day and he gives them authority to drive out impure spirits, to heal every disease and sickness, and then it lists the disciples, which I will pass on, and pick up on verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter this town of the Samaritans, because this wasn't in the plan right now. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel, and as you go, proclaim this message, the kingdom of heaven is near, Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons freely. You have received freely give. Then he switches and he says, and do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts. No bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or staff for the worker is worthy of his keep. So this is, a, this is a whole new concept. In other words, you're just going to walk in your authority, and this is, a, this is the authority that will accomplish these things. Whatever town, verse um, 11, or village you enter, search there for some worthy person and stay at their house until you leave. As you enter the home, 
Give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town, shake the dust off your feet. This is a beautiful piece of scripture that explains how we as Christians can walk in authority. Get up and ask God, who should I tell about the Lord? How should I defend the word of God today? Who should I minister to? If they don't receive what I have, I don't have to worry about it. I can just not let it bother me and go on to the next thing. Right here, there is an attitude. We're not being steered by our emotions. We're not being steered by our fear. We're not worried about how I'm going to make my meal. I'm not worried about where I'm going to stay. It's a complete uh, uh, rest in God's provision and walking in the authority that he's given us. So know the word of God. If you don't know the word of God, you're not going to know how to stand in the authority. And then be filled with the Holy Spirit. You so it's so important to walk into the authority of God, to hear the voice of God. We have the great benefit that the disciples didn't have when they were with Jesus, and that's the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm leaving, and I'm giving you the comforter, and he's going to finish speaking to your heart and teaching you all the things you need to teach. I'm, I'm done here. So um, Acts 3, 6, but Peter said, and now this is a, you know what, we should probably just turn there really quick. How are we doing on time? Okay, so turn with me to Acts because this is kind of like an um, a addition to the scripture that I just read um, in that Peter now is um, walking to the temple, and um, he's with John, and they're going to the temple to pray, and it's three in the afternoon, and verse two, a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the gate to beg, and when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for min money, and Peter looked him straight in the eye. He said, look at us. So the man gave him his attention, expecting to get something from them. In verse 6, then Peter said, Silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. He took up his hand and he helped him. Now, didn't Jesus teach him, don't take any gold, don't take any silver, just walk in the authority? Now Peter is filled with the Holy Ghost. He is lit on fire, and he's already stood up to all of these crowds of people, and thousands of people gave their um, heart to Jesus and, and turned from, from their wicked way. And so Peter now has been trained by God. Do you see the picture I'm saying right here? We can do that. We can walk in the authority that God has set before us. Whatever God has taught you, that's yours. Keep it. Stick it in your pocket. And pull it out as you walk in the authority. Peter said, hey, silver and gold, I don't got. But what I do have, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. He didn't even say, hey, you know what? I've learned how to heal people. I've had a few years. No, he just said, look, this is of God. You see, he got in the authority that was given to him. That God-given spiritual authority that he was trained in. I would like to propose that if we would yield our spirit to the Holy Spirit, and if we would look at our circumstances as an opportunity to stand up in the authority that God has given you, those things that God has taught you, those things, those, those hard things that God has walked you through when you came out to the other side and you knew more scripture and you had more confidence and you knew that God would be faithful to you, that's the authority that we can walk in just like Peter and turn to somebody else and say, oh, you know what? God can help you through that heartbreak. You know what? God will help you through that, that child that's run away. Let me tell you what God God has done for me. When we carry that authority and look for how we can walk in that authority, God anoints it and you will see miracles in your life. People will get healed. People will get saved. 
but you got to take it. That's my next point. You've got to take that authority. You've got to take that authority by prayer. We are not praying enough. We've got to pray as much as we can. Lord Jesus, you said that I could, I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am going to stand in faith and I am going to walk through this. We've got to pray the scriptures. That's why it's so important for us to read the scriptures. That's why it's so important for us to memorize the scriptures. You never know when you're going to have to walk in that authority. We got to praise God. This is the sanctuary that is going to open a new well of praise and worship like you have never seen before. Pastor and I have already, already heard in the spirit that this is one of the wells of glad tidings, this sanctuary right here. And praise and worship is going to be one of those things that opens your spirit up so that you will understand the authority. Because let me tell you something. In this staff here, pastor's word is his word. I, I can go down and say, hey, you know what? I think we should blah, 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 blah. And everybody's like, you know, because we're a good team. We're a really good team. They'll go, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But pastor can come down, and he can have that look on his face, and he says, you know what? We are doing this. Everybody just gets a little bit taller. Everybody just pays more attention because of that authority that they respect, that authority that they recognize. It would benefit us as Christians if we would learn to recognize a little bit more authority. Genesis 1.26, God said, take dominion over the earth and the fish. And in Revelations 1, 6, he said he's made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. So we are called to be priests unto God. Do you see the picture there? When we walk in our praise and our worship and reading the word of God and we getting that in our spirit, that's our priestly duties. But then when it's all inside of us, we walk in the authority of the kingdom. So there are a few things, though, that um, will take away your authority. I want to... I want to just say that, you know, Titus 2.15 says that these then are the things you should teach, encourage, rebuke with all authority. And in fact, don't let anyone despise you. But there are some things that cause us to not take authority. Number one, rebellion. If you cannot respect authority, then you can't walk in authority. If you're rebelling against people, you're being hard-hearted to your parents, hard-hearted to your pastor, hard-hearted to, you know, your boss and everybody, and you just think that they're all stupid and, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. And I'll show that anything like that, that immediately steals the authority that's in you. In fact, um, not only that, but you won't have authority over the enemy. Ignorance, number two. Hosea 4, 6. You know, I, I'll just go on. Okay. God declares, my people are destroyed by lack of knowledge. The Lord showed me that his people are being destroyed by ignorance of their authority in Christ. That's why it's so important to read the Bible. Because something comes up inside of you and you say, oh no, that's not the word of God. Oh no, that's, that's not of God. And the more you read the word of God, the more you will actually hear God's voice in your spirit. And so when something comes up, you'll just know. You won't know why you, know some, you don't know sometimes. There'll be a lot of times where I'll just go, no, mm, I don't know why. I don't have peace about that. I don't know why, but that's not right. That's, that's, something's wrong here. And that is a great protection. And so we have to walk in the authority that God has given us. 2 Corinthians 10, 3, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments. That means, ladies, that when your emotions are flying all over the place, when you're freaking out about something and you're having a hard time and your mind is telling you to do this and you're going to throw a fit and you're going to fall apart, you got to grab a hold of those and say, what does God say? What, is, what does God say about this? God says that he will never leave me or forsake me. Jeremiah 3.33, call unto me and I will answer and show you mighty things. So we cast down those arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring every thought into the captivity of Christ. That's why we walk in authority. That's, and you know what? We got it. The authority starts in us. Who are you? You were bought by Jesus' blood. Jesus died for you. He called you valuable, so valuable that now he's going to allow trials and temptations to enter your lives, brethren, to produce in you something that you need because God wants us to be strong Christians that walk around and lay hands on people and they get healed. Invite people to church and they bring their family and their whole family gets saved. People that stand up against the immorality that is attacking our teenagers at a, at a, at a shocking rate and say, oh no, that's, that's not right. That's not right. You know, I was talking to a young girl years ago, and I told her that she did not have to yield to men however they wanted her to. I said, you know, you can say no. And she was absolutely flabbergasted. I can? I said, absolutely. You are the temple of the Most High. God lives inside of you. We just led her to the Lord uh, the previous Sunday, and, and she, you know, she was from the world. And for me just to say, you know what? You have the authority to say no. You have the authority, ladies and gentlemen, to say no to sinful thoughts. You have the authority to say, you know what? I'm not doing that anymore because God lives in me, and he will help me overcome this. So ignorance, it's a terrible thing. And you know what? You don't have to be ignorant. You can just read the Word of God. You can just, amazing, you can Google any topic you want, Bible verse, and it'll come up. And you can memorize that, and that will be the authority that you stand on when you want to get on that computer. Number two, uh, number three, fear. Second Timothy 1, 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear. God gave us a spirit. He is in us. Fear paralyzes us and keeps us from wielding the authority that we have in Christ. We're afraid. Well, what would happen? What will happen if I stand up and say, mm -mm, I'm not doing that. Years ago, our daughter was in ballet and we were having a meeting for the, you know, end of the year um, performance. And, you know, it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. And the teacher said, well, we're going to have a practice on Sunday. And I expected everybody in the room to go, well, well, what time Sunday? You know, because, like, you know, we go to church on Sunday. And, you know, they all knew that, you know, we were pastors. And, you know, Sunday is God's day for us. And um, she said, oh, it'll be Sunday, you know, at, at 11 o'clock. And I'm like, I'm looking around. Nobody's saying anything. I said, Am I the only one that goes to church on Sunday? Is in God's house at 11 o'clock? I just boldly said it. And they all kind of looked, yeah. I said, well, we won't be there until after church. See, that's that, that, that boldness to know that, that, you know, there is an authority that you can walk in. This world is messed up, and there's too many uh, Facebook sermons too many interpretations of who they are in God via someone's opinion, and we need to stand up and stay in the authority. You know what? That's not right. That's not true. This is the word of God, and you don't even have to excuse it or defend it. All you have to do is post it. Here's the word, plain and simple. We can't be fearful. Matthew 10, 19 says, but when they arrest you, 
Don't worry about what you're going to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it won't be you speaking. It'll be me speaking through you. Isn't that amazing? The Spirit of God will speak through you. You don't have to worry about what to say. You know, you might think, wow, you know, she was a little harsh when she said, you know, am I the only one that goes to church? But maybe there were people there that needed to be convicted. I didn't accuse them. I just asked. Doesn't anybody in here go to church? You know, there was a day when everybody went to church on Sunday. Number five, the thing that hinders you, hinders your authority, is sin. 1 John 3, 4 through 6. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that God came in order to take away your sin, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. I'll read that again. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or knows him. Wow. There are a lot of people that are running around and dropping the God word all the time. God this and God that. and then, but, but you know what? If you've given your heart to Jesus and you understand what God's done in you and you understand what he wants to do with your life, it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what education you have. God has got a plan for you. He wants you to walk in authority, to lay hands on people at work, and they are healed to talk about the power of God, to understand that you need to get up and pray for your children and actually have the uh, Holy Spirit talk to your kids so you don't have to. But you know what? We can't tell our kids not to smoke marijuana if we're sitting in the front room with our pipe being all cool. Don't smoke. You know there's a reason why we can't do that, and I'll get to that in a minute. But one of the most important things, parents, that you need the authority of God is, is because your children need you to be in authority. They don't need you to be their best friend. They need you to lead them and prepare them for life. And they need to know authority, how to get it, how to respect it, how to walk in it, how to let it be their guide. And if you've got sin, you're on the computer in places you shouldn't be. That steals your authority, dads. Get off the computer. God has given you the authority to walk out of it and say, I don't need this anymore. Now, I know that I might be stepping on a few toes, but I could be saving a life. Because sin leads to death every time. Matthew 7, 1 through 8, talks about judging. And it says, you know, you can't, well, I'll just read it. Judge not that you may be judged. For the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. With the measure that you use, it will be measured to you. That's the point I'm making. There is a thing, a power, an authority that gets stolen when you know that you're doing something you're not supposed to do. How can you say to your brother, let me take that speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. You see, we even know in our spirit. This is, this is Jesus just saying, you know, this is how we feel. This is how we are. This is how human beings are. We don't have the authority to judge other people because we know in our heart that we are being a hypocrite. Now, this portion of the scripture I'm pulling out so that you see that it is your natural ability. It, you lose your authority. You lose your power when you know you're sinning. And, and this is what happens is you miss out because the sin that we walk in steals the authority that God has for us. Now, I know that God has got great plans for you. I know 
that many of you right now are saying, wow, I didn't realize I could walk in the authority that I, uh, that I, wow, I just didn't know. Ladies, you can walk in the authority and pray for your husband and God will speak to him. You can be the authority of a wife that is submitted to your husband and honors him and loves him and God will speak to him. Your children will see the authority in the Word of God that you stand on and say, no, this is what the Word of God says. We honor the authority of God and, and the love that we give each other and the respect that we give each other. We, we honor the authority in, in each other and, and the placement. And the family unit will become strong. I'm going to call the worship team up and I'm going to call pastor up and, and we're going to pray right now for you. I believe by the unction of the Holy Spirit that many people are saying to themselves, wow, I have not been walking in authority. And so right now I challenge you, repent. Ask God to forgive you. We do things wrong all day long. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to anoint you once again to walk in that authority and train you and teach you Praise so that you can be what God's called you to be. Praise the Lord. Stay with me if you would. Okay. Thank you. Hallelujah. It wasn't here. It was in the States. And I saw these two policemen had this guy in the ground. They were wrestling him. <laughs> and I was walking by. And I said, hello, I'm Pastor Vince Schott. And I looked at this young man who was just being foolish. I said, just do what they say. Just do what they say. They're not here to hurt you. You're resisting. I said, just do what they say. I said, you're going to be on the ground the rest of your life. Because you've never done what any... And I'm preaching to these cops. And this one cop goes, amen, pastor. <laughs> amen, pastor. Now that's preaching. Hallelujah. I should have taken an offer. Yeah, there. you should have. <laughs> but he just said, amen, pastor. I said, dude, they don't want to break you up. They don't want to hurt you. So I'm not here by accident. God brought me here to save you because you've been resisting God. And the two policemen said, come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I don't know what got on me. It was none of my business. But I said, you know what? You don't have to handcuff this young man. God did. And they let him go. It was the craziest thing. Wow. And here's what this guy said. He said, now where's your church? Yeah, that's come on, the everybody. authority. Where's your church? They recognize Hallelujah. that where's authority. But I am so rebellious. I, I, I know so much. Mm. I, I, I'm just yeah. just incredibly bright, intelligent person. We can really think that, can't we? <laughs> I do sometimes. You know, honestly, I just think I'm, I I, I'm so full of myself and Me so too. full of a, I, I know this and I know that. Right. And I, I find myself, I don't have that authority of God. Mm. And I just want to submit to God. I want to submit to a mighty God. Yeah. I want to turn my pride in, my arrogance in, my opinions in. And I've had to say a few times, and I don't know if you've ever had to say this before, Vince, would you please just shut, shut up? up. Yeah. Just shut up and do what God says. Amen. Amen. Oh, and his kingdom and his peace and his purpose comes in my life. So just try it once. <laughs> Why don't you just say this? Would you just please for a moment stop and breathe <laughs> and shut up and just do what God tells you to do? And it's good. Right. I'm telling you, it is good. Hallelujah. The other, this is deep. Ready? The other, it is bad. Yes. Let's try that again. Good. Submitting to God is good. good. The other is bad. bad. I wasn't as deep as you, but I think that makes sense. Hallelujah. No, I, I feel the Holy Spirit right here. I do here. too. There, the, it really is that simple. It really is that simple. Uh, thank you for coming up and submit yourself to the Holy Spirit. Yes. Give yes. your life one more time to Jesus. Put down all of those things that are ruining your life and just give it all to Jesus. Well, I like what my dad said. You're not going to kindergarten for the third time. <laughs>
I was the only kid. He was going to walk me to the penitentiary right then and put me in. And my dad looked at me. He said, you are not going to kindergarten three times. How many don't want to go to kindergarten three times? Hallelujah. Look at you're too big for the desk. <laughs> yeah, right? you're just too big for the desk. Let's just do it God's way. Let's do it God's, God's way. word is true. Thank yes, you, Pastor is. Jody Ann. Father, we thank you for the people. Yes. We just bless them. Their hearts are open. And they'll just say, God, I want to surrender to you, whatever you say, because I want to live under your kingdom. Amen. And I want your reign to be in my life. I submit my life to you, Jesus. I want your kingdom. I want your will in my life. In Jesus' wonderful name. Jody Ann, we're going to see Sunday. our family Sunday, <laughs> Sunday. Everybody say Sunday. Hallelujah. I can't wait. So you need to sign up right now. And remember the little wisdom I gave you. Are they having church? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Here's what we're going to do. Sunday, 9 o'clock, sign up. Right. Sunday, 11 o'clock, sign up. Don't sign up for both. Wednesday That's night, sign up. We're going to have Sunday. We'll be right in the sanctuary. Sunday, 9, 11, and then Wednesday also. So we're going to open this house up so we can gather. We're going to abide by the restrictions. And uh, we're going to do it right. We don't want anybody sick, anybody hurt. Uh, we want to wear your mask. But I wanted to say this to you. We are going to have the time of our life. This place the atmosphere has changed because a king is being worshipped. It is incredible. Bring your praise. Hold on, hold on, Joe. Give me a little lick, would you? Just give me a little lick. You can just push it a little bit, just for me. Come on, Joe. Just push it, just a little bit. Come on, somebody. Now, Grandma, if you have a piece in your hair, I want to warn you, Sunday, you're going to lose it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You're going to lose it. If you have a fake eye, it's going to pop out because we're going to have church in this place. We're going to give God the praise and the glory and the honor that's worthy to his name. Hallelujah. You bring your praise. You bring your dance. You bring your shout. And we're going to lift the name up. And God is going to do miracles in this place on Sunday in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. God bless you. We'll see you on Sunday. Thank you, worship team. Lead us out. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul.